The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter diamond and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into Life Tech Assist is an avid fisherman, was treasurer for his local football club before heading north for what I presume is the sun and the fishing, and has worked for insurers, a dealer group, and is now doing his very own thing. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, David Spateri. Woo! <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter. Pleasure to be here too. Fantastic. And I feel like we could spend a lot of time on the the north and the fishing, but, you know, we've got to get into the serious business of advice tech and this stuff. So (laughs) I have to do that offline because I'm excited to hear about the move. Before we do dive into Life Tech Assist, then let's get to know you through your tech use. Um, Let's start with, and the listeners all know where I'm going to go because they've heard it each time on the episode. What is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I'm going to disappoint you here, <gasps> and I don't use an emoji. None <gasps> whatsoever. If, if anything, it will be, just be the thumbs up. Right. It's, it's almost like an okay, but I don't we use We are on episode 33, folks, and this is the first time somebody do, doesn't use emojis. This is fantastic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Always one to be different, David. I love it. I love it. Now, how about smartphones? We all just can't live without them, really. If you had to wipe everything off your smartphone and just keep three apps, what are the three apps you'd keep? Oh, well, you did introduce me saying that I'm an avid fisherman. Yes. So one of the apps is called Windy. Ooh which uh, gives you the the weather forecast or the wind forecast. So that allows me whether to go fishing or not. <gasps> the second one is called Tides AU. <laughs> and it's I'm about checking a the tides. Yep. So <laughs> yep. the, 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 the best fishing times to go is uh, awesome. based on the tides. Yeah. And a third one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, you uh, sound like you're set with your two well, fishing I've, ones. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's just pretty set with the fishing, but... <laughs> Maybe, look, I do like the AFL, so maybe the AFL oh, app. Oh, or... yeah, good call. Good yeah, call. Look, look, uh, and look, you yeah. know what? While we're on tech and unrelated to advice tech, folks, I apologise for this, but I've got to ask the question. Do you, when you're fishing, do you use one of those things that you see on TV where they're sort of looking down into the water through, like they use a piece of tech to sort of see what's underneath them? Do no. you use that or is that cheating? No, that's 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 cheating. They got the yeah. cameras there, and it's expensive. you know all that stuff. Like yeah. it's almost like um, yes. ultrasound, not ultrasound, but you know what, sonic boom or something that they do where they can sort of sense yes. if there's much life underneath them. Yeah, it sound it seemed like cheating to me. It, yeah, well, it's, it's not so much cheating, but uh, just to set it all up and the cost to set it up. Right. It's really for uh, for filming purposes. Yeah, fair enough. That's fair enough because you could be sitting out there for hours and nothing doing. I Correct. guess that makes sense. All right, let's dive into life tech assist now. 
We've actually been on a bit of an insurance kick on the show recently, having just interviewed CDM Solutions the episode before this one. Um, now, Life Tech Assist is, a, is relatively new. Uh, do you want to talk us through sort of broadly what it is and what angle it's coming from? Yeah, sure, sure. The, in actual fact, I'll be lying if I said I invented the concept of it, uh, even though I've been doing it for many, many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the concept is providing independent technical support for all life insurance inquiries, uh, right. as well as providing a library of uh, a, a squillion uh, documents that helps them with, uh, you know, choosing products, recommending. Um, so there's a whole library of all insurance documents, as well as the insurers have got on board as well, and um, all of their marketing material. So, so. I guess the logic behind it is strategy, product, uh, and marketing. That's okay. Strategy, product, sorry, and education. Education, uh, education I say. yeah, which is it feel, that feels like a ne- like a never ending piece of string with insurance, doesn't it? Like the education that advisors sort of need to keep up with. Yeah. And interestingly, aside from direct from the insurers, which a lot, I mean, each of them have huge education resources. But aside yeah. from that, it's actually not easy to get something that's sort of independent from all that, right? It's actually well, difficult well to get information that yeah. way. The only independency you, you tend to get, sort of, is uh, from the software, you know, yeah. um, your comparison software. But even, even that, you know, can be pulled apart if you really, really need to. Right. And, and you know, on an education front, I actually noticed it just the other day. I was I was on doing, you know, and my weekly CPD to try and just keep on top of it during <laughs> the year and and – to find something on insurance is actually not easy, to be quite honest. Um, so it's something that I, I do see as a bit of a gap. So is that sort of what drew you to this? Um, you know, aside of, of course, um, for those of you that don't know, David's been the talking head on insurance for a very long time in our industry. You and I were on a roadshow many years ago, um, and I remember you talking, you know, with for a little group talking all about insurance, and you've been doing that for a while now. But clearly you saw there was a gap or – did somebody approach you and go, David, we really think you should be, you know, filling this need in the market? I'll be uh, long if I take the credit for the concept. <laughs> um, I actually had a different uh, uh, a different business mindset uh, to look after claims for the for clients. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was through probably pressure from the advisors once yep. I left my, my previous employer yep. that uh, they continued to call me regarding technical inquiries and, and things like that. And they're the ones that put the motion or the notion in my head to, hey, why don't you open up your own technical support? Yeah. Nobody does it. It's independent. You seem to know your stuff from yeah. A through to Z. And um, I probably got that maybe a dozen times. And <laughs> we end up getting two or three of those advisors and said, well, what do you really want? What are you talking about? Because it's, it's actually what I like doing. I love providing yeah. education to advisors. Um, and just to give you a bit of a niche the the last eighteen months with the new income protection product, we've had yeah. we've had well over a hundred changes just from that product suite from oh. insurers. So um, yeah, it's it's just been uh, so, so so I don't know whether it was timing or what, but it's worked for the better and yep. it's on a subscription basis. They priced it for me. They said what what are we what they're after, and um, lo and behold, I, yep. I said, it took me six months to set up. Crossing my fingers, crossing yep. my legs, thinking, <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll see how we go. I've yep. already been six months out of a job. Let's see what the next six <laughs> months bring. Yeah. And uh, look, 12 months on uh, since launch in March last year. Yeah. It's been awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, there is a need. Yes. For it, and that's and that's been clearly established by by the subscription subscriptions taken up as well yeah, as fantastic. many AFSLs seeking some of the services some that help. we offer. Yeah. So let's talk through sort of the elements of the subscriptions so people can understand. So clearly, you know, there's tools they can access online via mem- the membership. So it's like there's the the place where they can get a whole lot of those materials, I'm betting. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like what you've added to the materials is the ability to respond to queries. So like a scenario somebody has or a challenge they're facing and you can then respond um, individually. Is that the case? That's that's exactly the case. Okay. Um, to write a book, and I've been asked from many of my employers, why don't you write down the most asked question that you get? And 
it is impossible because <laughs> it's all about an individual circumstance. Yeah. Uh, and you just can't, you can't put it in writing. You know, yeah. every query is, is different. You know, yeah. hot off the topic at the moment is is the income protection with the agreed value and the indemnity, the older style policies and the pricing. Yeah. How, how do we get to recommending something that's on the market today, which is of lesser quality, mm. and how do we meet best interest duties? Yeah. And that's a question that, that seems to come up over and over and over again. Yeah. So there are processes that we put in place to ensure that it does meet clients' best interest as long as we've done these steps beforehand. Right. Uh, but, yeah, yeah the, the, there is you know, another one is claims. Clients bring mm. me up. Uh, they've got this condition. Is it worth claiming or can they claim? Or right. cli- a claim's been declined. You know, is it is it right? And yeah. there's many times I'll just do, you know, a, a bit of a check to see, you know, if I feel that the claim that's been declined is, is correct or is there another avenue to take? Yep. Um, yeah. And it's funny, when, once I set up the business, look, I've been in insurance since 86 and uh, I, I set up the business predominantly for risk specialists. Yeah. Okay. So risk specialists is what I had in mind. Um, and lo and behold, you know, I, I now work with, and I'm very fortunate and honoured, and I thank uh, the, the members. I work with around 250 members now. And if I really awesome. broke up the business, nearly 70% of the advisors that's, that subscribe to the service will only do 30% or less insurance. Okay. Okay. So the majority of their business is probably superannuation investments, all that sort of stuff. Correct. Correct. And, and then, and, but of course, what happens with super? Well, lots of people have policies in super and then suddenly you're reviewing this. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's, it's a can of worms, that stuff, isn't it? So, yeah, it certainly so is. The, and there's something that yeah. I didn't think, I actually didn't think until probably 12 months now. And I start thinking, well, you know what? If there was an investment service like this and I was still advising, I could do, I can do the insurance pretty easily yeah come to investments i would need some seek some 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 help assistance on that side yeah Yeah, absolutely so so i really get where where they're coming from and and it's great you know i really enjoy talking to 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 all the members and uh yes it's been good it's been good fun and to that end like just sort of understanding you know i mean 250 is a a great number um a year in so congratulations on that it's fantastic thank you um the sort of breakdown of the type of, of members, like are you finding that it is mainly just the advisors or are you getting power planners that are making inquiries? Like who who are the bodies that you're dealing with um, as part of utilising the membership? Yeah, so with the membership, I, I do a, a bit of work with some AFSLs. Yep. So I've got uh, two or three reasonably sized AFSLs that uh, I do work even from a compliance perspective. Oh, yeah. Uh, strategy text um, and almost feel like I'm part of, 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 the, of their staff, which is mm-hmm. great. Um, and then with the subscription-based service, um, generally how we operate is per practice, one subscription, maximum two advisors. If there's more than two advisors, well, then, you know, it's, it's more. And what the su- subscription is for is for the advisor, their support staff, power planners. So, um, yeah, it's so actually- Depending assistant. on how they work. So, it'll be, yeah, Correct. so it'll depend on who is the body maybe collating something or yeah, that, yeah. that, yeah, so it'll depend whether it's the advisor or the other, which I think what what I like about this sort of um, service and, and having dealt with even yourself and other similar technical bodies in providers is being able to say to the staff, look, if there's something you hit that you can't get to the bottom of, start with them. Yeah. It's just a great way for them to learn aside from anything yeah. else, right? It's because actually me giving them an answer isn't as powerful as, as them having to enunciate it to you and then you iterate with them to get the, the, the outcome and they learn as part of that process. That's a you good know? Call. So it's, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. So it's it's sort of more powerful in that sense. So one of the things I noticed in the um, sort of list of resources, which caught my eye just a little, is industry super uh, insurance handbooks. So I'm betting there's some questions you get about those a fair bit. Many um, questions. If I if I look at uh, what's the most downloaded document in, in, the, in the library, it is the uh, industry super fact sheets. Yeah. And I guess what that is, it's – a fact sheet on every industry fund, and yep. um, it's it's 
one one page per per industry front, and it looks at uh, their automatic acceptance levels, who are their underwriters, how they charge their premiums. Everything is page reference. There's commentary below on some of the things that I see. Uh, you may need to be aware cautious of. or aware of. Yeah. And um, in relation to getting the insurance uh, document from from the industry funds, we've also created a uh, an area where you can download the industry booklet, okay. which at times can be difficult to find because yes. yeah, I'm not sure whether you tried <laughs> to look for them even when when setting them all up. I'm thinking, geez, these, these industry funds. Some of them hide that industry booklet, that, that insurance booklet. Look, and, and I, it, it's hard to know whether it's a, like, just badly designed websites because, like, the multi, multi-click, you know, when you've got to go through eight layers of clicks to get to yes, something? Yes. I'm like, I'm not entirely sure it's intentional as much as it's just they don't get that when somebody's looking for information, I want to click once. Like oh. I just, I just want to go straight to the info, please. And that's true of their clients too. Like yeah. that's not just us as advisors. Yeah. And I think, I think that's part of the challenge. Um, and I think the other part is, is that it's seen that information is seen as something. Oh, you know, is ever anybody ever going to want that anyway? So maybe that's part of it too. Is it sort of left in the bowels yeah. of the website? Yeah. And I tell you what is interesting <laughs> is, is the different ways that that insurance booklet is set out. Right. You know, there is just so yeah. many different methods that they've put the booklet together yeah. um it's it's it's, it's crazy it, it, yeah. it, can, it can be daunting it really is and yeah you know researching them all firsthand yeah and particularly i think the what i'm loving about the the approach you've got with the service is if we all start from scratch digging out these things then your energy is on everything Whereas if we can start from a base where you've done a certain level of work and are almost flagging things, then we can focus on the flags, right? We can focus on the watch out for this or we're aware of that, you know, that exactly. that can make a big difference of, of narrowing down, you know, how you can compare or, or things yeah. you want clients to be aware of. Because, you know, the, the truth is there's going to be many situations where a client should hold of, hold on to whatever the hell insurance they have, you know, but we still need to get on top of what that is and how it's going to work. Absolutely. And, and, and I feel the biggest fear out there for advisors is is meeting the best interest duties. Yeah. It seems to yeah. be something that am I meeting the best interest duties? And, and, and my theory behind the best interest duties is as long as you can put your client in a better position to where they are today, You've met the best interest duties. Now, yeah. in theory, it sounds great, but what happens if someone's got one of the older style income protection products and, uh, you know, cost is an issue? Yes. You know, and, and they still need the, the insurance. But if they were going to cancel that policy due to the cost, even after trying to reorganize it to something more affordable, they're yeah. still going to cancel it. Taking out something that's available today is still in the best interest because- they would it's have something. ended up with nothing. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 And it is there's um there's a lot of that I think in in insurance because it's not just on or off. I think often we sort of well, certainly the public look at it that way. You know, you get those calls and and they've got all these, you know, multiple different policies. Oh, well, we're just, you know, is it worthwhile? Well, it's costing a fortune and, and it's wow, well, maybe we should cancel. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's like yeah. saying you should cancel four different services you have all at once. Like, well, no, that's not how we do this. Let's, yes. you know, there's small steps you can take. So in terms of that then, um, is I'm I'm betting that there's a whole lot of um, other ways that, uh, you know, aside from that sort of thing and maybe pointing people in the right direction of what to look for, things like even, you know, strategies in insurance and calculators and stuff like that. Is that that's something else that you've got as part of the membership yes, as well? Yes, there's many calculators in there. Yep. There's methodologies on calculating for calculating personal insurance, income yep. protection, and and business insurance. Um, you know, I'm not giving tax advice, but yep. there are um, you know some of the tax implications on on the different structures. So yeah, there, there, there's all that there as yeah. as well. And it's an interesting um, it's an interesting thing with insurance. So w- when you're working as an advisor and doing investment advice or underlying investment advice, whether it's in super or wherever it is, you know you're each at probably at least each year, if not more often, you're revisiting things. So it's so in terms of building the skills, then there's a more rapid escalation of the skills in investments, even if yeah. you're working as a power planner. Whereas with insurance, there's the upfront work you do. And then really unless somebody talks about 
you know, like you say, adjusting. And we can do the, you know, the annual reviews of their costs and, and the level of cover, but really then claims is something that, you know, I mean, some people, some members of your team in a practice may never have experienced a claim, even if they've been with the business for ages. Yes. You know, so I'm betting yes. claims is one of the things that people end up needing a bit of help for, help with. Is that the case? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I do receive many calls from advisors saying, clients just rang me up, they've got X, Y, Z. What do I do? You know, yeah. is it claimable? Um, so we just need to dig that a little bit deeper and hopefully provide them some some uh, strategies and, and things to consider before submitting it to, to the insurer. Awesome. Um, and, and likewise on the back end, if, uh, if if the claim is not fruitful, yeah, why isn't it fruitful? You know, yeah. um, just, just getting that second opinion, I yeah. feel is a lot more comforting. And, and the fact that I'm not... not uh, aligned with any insurer or anything like that yeah um seems seems to work quite well yeah yeah ac- absolutely and so is there any in terms of um the practices that are sort of really working well with you know engaging with the membership and their team are using it well is there any tips for anybody is there any ways of approaching it that you think work better um for a practice i, I guess i'm probably going to get back to you know, a, a step that you just mentioned earlier in re- in relation to Strategic advice. Yep. Since the introduction of uh, the new income protection, it's become more strategic. Yep. You know, and that's what I'm seeing out there with a lot of advisors. You know, there's a lot of philosophies out there with with claim statistics, and there's advisors doing five year benefit periods, right. you know, which is generally own occupation and tacking on total and permanent disablement. Some are doing a two year with total and permanent disablement. Some are saying to the age of sixty five. Cost is becoming a lot more relevant, and if we look at the new range of income protection available, they're not like they used to be, right? Where they were much of a muchness. Yeah, you know, there's some real niches okay. that uh, insurers actually specialise in. Okay, uh, which I call their sweet spots. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah, you're right. I mean, that's that's what um, I mean. The reverse is now potentially the case, say with platforms in. Yeah. In investments, I mean, sorry, there are there are differences, but they've all come a lot closer than they used to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas it sounds like what you're saying is we're almost getting the reverse now because of the way these changed. Well, for income it, protection. it changed because uh, the recommendation uh, by APRA was was to produce a product that yeah. covered off this, 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 and that. So yeah. no insurer knew what the other insurer was doing. Yeah. Uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, I was on three or four committees of their product development, yep. signing all these confidentiality agreements, <laughs> uh, which I was bloody useless because I knew what other insurers were doing. So everyone brought out an offer that was different yeah. to everyone else. Yeah. So and that's hence the reason why there's been over 100 changes. You know, yeah. some were a little bit off the mark compared to some of their competitors. And some so were then they're adjusting. Bit, yeah, so they're continually adjusting and adjusting. Yeah. So hence yeah. the reason why there is uh, you know, difference between – one company product to another in relation to niche. But, yeah. but the fundamentals are the same. They yeah. provide a, an income in the event of sickness or accident. It's just all the nitty gritties that, that fall behind it. Yeah. And I guess the other thing that I could see being powerful people is is let's say that maybe they do, like you say, maybe they do a third of the business is insurance, but it's predominantly, you know, personal to individuals insurance um, for their personal needs. And then they get that self-employed person or somebody that's, that needs something a little different, then, you know, it can, it's natural for an advisor to sort of hesitate and like, oh, hold on, you know, this is a whole world naturally and validly. <laughs> Yes. Oh, this is complicated and yes. different and detailed and and to be honest, you know, the the insurers have a varied you know quite a varied um helpfulness in that sense um in terms of helping you get across the line. So I could imagine that's where you can help too is to go, all right, like you might know your stuff over here, but let me help you out on this sort of new part of insurance that you're now tackling. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Look, um I don't provide recommendations, but I, sure. I certainly provide um providers to consider. Yeah. And reasoning as to why I would consider them. Yeah. Yeah. And even just the insights into, you know, what to look out, what to even ask the client for or what to look out for or the, you know, like there's, there's nuances to all of this stuff. No, um, we've, got a number of, we've built a number of tools, you know, for pre-assessments, for marketing yeah. checklists. Uh, it just, there's a whole range of things there that they can use. Yeah. Uh, but if I can give some very, very simple not advice, but simple <laughs> things to consider. Tips yeah. is yeah. Um, pre-assess, 
pre-assess the case and yeah, get the okay. information up front because yeah. you know insurance is becoming it's starting to take longer and longer to get through. Yep. So and it's just like painting. Uh, the job of the your, your paint job is only as good as the preparation. Look, and I would um, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. Only in the sense that. Um, just dealing with the insurers generally at the moment is or has been really for the last 12 months tough because you can be waiting 40 minutes on the phone just to get something quite simple emailed out to you, which may come within yeah. days or weeks. Like it's, it's, there's clearly some challenges generally going on. Um, and so if, if, you know, some tips from you can help clarify that. So it's a, even a one request exercise as opposed to a five request exercise yeah. for the insurer, you know, that can make a, a huge difference. Let's talk about the um, the sort of marketing element of this in that um, my understanding is you've got some tools there that could help advisors sort of bring up insurance or or that they could utilise as part of their marketing efforts. What does that entail? Look, I've pretty much piggybacked off a lot of um, the material that insurers have produced. Yep. And um, it's things like uh, intergenerational advice, yep. uh, educating clients, particularly uh, from a claims perspective, and one thing I, 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 I do talk about, and we always, you know, advisors and, and myself, we always seem to look at price, price, price. Mm. What we don't consider, and, and we can even put this in the statement of advice, is the well-being programs that insurers actually put out. Yep. You know, the the vitality, AIA Embrace, Best Doctors, yep. uh, Tell Enhance. There are so many of those programs out there. Um and there's so much education on rehabilitation and assisting clients. Mm. Use them. They don't get yeah. used often enough. <clears throat> yeah. And 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 they are great tools, absolutely yeah. great tools. I'm not sure whether we, we sometimes think, are they trying to de- deny a claim or are they trying to, you know, by using the re- rehabilitation? No, they're actually great tools. And, you know, I, I can talk firsthand with an experience that I had many moons ago with MLC Best Doctors where, where I thought that was just – another thing that they'll throw out but i actually was able to utilize that service and got an absolutely fantastic outcome and ever since then i've been a big believer and i think it is you know we've got to let our suspicions go for a bit we've got to stop being quite so cynical and also understand that because i think also in our head we're like oh but you know what's the chance i'm going to use that well probably about the same chance as making a claim yeah (laughs) Like yeah. that's the point. These things are designed often, particularly yeah. best doctors, to sit alongside somebody who's going through that process. And it's like, well, yeah. if you view the insurance as valuable, then probably the service will be too. You know, yeah. it's yeah. it's and, um, and everyone's looking at uh, you know industry funds and the insurance they got within their superannuation and all that. Uh, those are the insurance in the, in the superannuation or their employer super doesn't have these sort of things. No, you know, things like the financial planning benefit. Yeah, you know, this is this is things that I believe can be put into your statement of advice yeah. as, as to why it's in the best interest to to use one of the retail providers. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's a valid point you make where we're like, no, oh, you know, this is just a a um, not a fad, but like a like a little gotcha that's an extra thing that's not really worth anything. But yeah. interestingly, I know from um, somebody who used to know that worked in um, workers' comp, and the insurers spent an inordinate amount on things like the pain centres, trying to analyse pain and how people can better handle, you know, if they've got chronic things that go on for a long time, how they can better handle that, and the techniques we can use that are more new wave, and like these things aren't like you say, trying to avoid spending money, they're spending a fortune on them. Like yeah. They're investing serious money. I mean, some of the best research and development in medical science happens because it's an insurer that funded the thing. So, yeah. Yeah. so you know, what they're interested in is a good outcome for, no, you're right. you know, their, their policyholders. So um, does it potentially help them? Well, sure, but I'm okay with that. You know, if it's a win for both the client and the insurer, then I'm okay. You know, that sounds yeah. good to me. And look, there's um, also tools available that, Assist the clients, yeah, you know, with the claim, or yeah. assist clients that that has you know a uh, an immediate family member with with a condition. Yeah, they can utilize it, utilize yeah. the service. You know, they're the things that I would be talking about rather than just price, 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 price. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
So then what are you seeing, um, you know, as you sort of work forward? And I know it's it's been really sort of early days, you know, like <laughs> not a long way into it, but are there extra queries that are starting to come up or are there other things you think you'll add to the service or, or add-ons or anything like that that you think you'll develop over time? Yeah. Well, I just did a paper on the best paying life insurance companies. Yeah. Based on, on factual evidence. Yes. Um, so I'll continue to do those sorts of things. It, it tends to create a, a fair bit of interest. Mm-hmm. But um, look, the resource library from a life tech assist has around about 50 or 60, 60 documents. They're continually being reviewed, continually being up, updated. Insurers are bringing out some good stuff. So I've got some of their stuff on there as well. But um, pretty much focusing on continuing to grow the library. Yeah, I'm finding that uh, a lot of the members are looking for for material that they can use with their clients. Yeah. Um, so that's the sort of things, and and something that you know I do pride myself on is looking at an independent assessment. You know, between insurer to insurer, and that's yeah. something they can't get off the shelf anyway. Yeah, and I think yeah, you're right. I I mean, when you when you look at best interests and 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 our obligation to do enough digging, you know, I mean. I'm, simplify yeah. the expression there, but <laughs> to do yeah. enough digging, then without something like what you're offering there, then really the only digging you can do is individually into each provider. That's correct. You know, so so it's not it's it doesn't really help, you know, that's not really helping our research in that well, sure, you've done some research, but there's not some sort of overarching expertise applied to that 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 can sort of enhance the efforts of that research that can really demonstrate, you know what, looked into this, here are some highlights here, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So yeah. I think a bit like, you know, research houses for investment, you know, it's it's sort of along a similar lines. It's sort of giving yes. us another place we can go that's yes. outside our world and the provider's world that says, hey, here are some insights. So I think yeah. we can't underrate that in terms of its value. No, um, and, and, and as I said, best interest seems to be a real – bugbear for a lot of people, meeting best interest, hmm. and 99.9% of advisors are meeting best interest, but how do they actually articulate in, in, yeah. a, in a statement of advice? Yeah. And it's just sometimes picking up the phone and saying, hey, listen, this is what I'm thinking, blah, 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 what do you think? And you can provide some commentary and say, look, fantastic, you know, and, and the reason why I'd, I'd do what you're doing because of this, 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 isn't that. Yeah. There's your, there's some of your strategy text. Yeah. You know, yeah, just absolutely. In, a, in a conversation. Yes. And I think that's that's one of the things I'm sort of coming to, to groups with too is is it's not that the thinking hasn't happened, it's how do we substantiate the thinking. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And so that's the like it's we've got to separate those two things because <laughs> yes. they're yes. not the same. So so even being able to have the conversation with you, substantiate that outcome and then take a step from that. That that is all wonderful, you know, breadcrumbs. Yes. Um, as evidence of of the work done, uh, which and, is really- and reliance on comparative software, yeah, just just it, it doesn't do it because if you actually really understand how the com- you know, comparative software works, um, it's based on benefits and features, and not mm. all benefits and features come into play in in scenarios. Right. So it may be rated a better product, but that benefit yeah. of, for example, paying a terminal illness up to five mil for someone that's got two million dollars worth of cover. Yeah. And company rated a bit lower, yeah. Um, because they the terminal illness benefit is up to three million dollars, doesn't yeah. come into play. Yeah. So it's just not even relevant. It's yeah. not even relevant. Yeah. And look, it's it's I um I heard a, um, it must have been an old risky. I've got to say, heard a great analogy where they said, you know, it, similarly when you see those those ratings or those comparisons, it's like saying, you know, the Porsche is the best car ever, but you've got somebody with a toddler goes well i can't i can't put my car seat in the carrera like are yeah. you serious you know like yeah. like it's that it's that yes it's great but yeah. it still doesn't apply like that's not for this scenario it still doesn't get us what we need you know yes, so i'll try, I'll try and put it fit him in there i'll yeah, try and compromise something else. surely yeah can we not jam that in <laughs> and look i've said that and i am confident somebody's going to reach out and go you know they do one with a, with a car seat like <laughs> i'm sure that'll be the case but uh, the point stands you know it's yeah. it's got to be suited for for the particular individual we're looking at so have we missed anything have we covered the sort of the key elements of life tech assist and yeah, what you, yeah, you, you're I, providing? I think we have i think we have as i said it's a it's an independent service uh for advisors looking for assistance with with any of their insurance um insurance work and yeah. i pretty much take questions 
on virtually anything and uh, the person I'll be speaking to would be speaking to me. Yeah. Um, as well as a self-serve um, document library that they have yeah. uh, 24-7 access to. Perfect. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Life Tech Assist, then the website link is in the episode show notes along with David's LinkedIn details. So if you want to reach out and nudge him and uh, ask more, then I'm sure he'd be happy for you to do that. Um, I'm actually so glad we're still able to get access to the wealth of your knowledge, David, because you've been around and and I've watched a whole lot of sessions and got huge value. So we can't lose that IP. We, we need to hold on to all of that experience you had. Uh, so I'm I'm really hoping that this takes off and you stay around for a long time uh, to come. I think I'm, I'm just, I'll be around for a while yet. And and you're right, we've lost a lot of knowledge Haven't over we? the last two, three years. And um, yeah, it's something that... Uh, you know, I've always been passionate about insurance and working with advisors, working with insurers, um, and getting more people insured. I, I guess that's that's the key message out yeah. of all this too. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time and best of luck for the future. Thanks, Peter. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. So, are you one of the 250 advisors that are current members of Life Tech Assist? Um, how have you found it? Uh, where's it proved useful? What sol- problems has it solved for you? Please share your insights on the Ensemble Community platform. Um, we'd all love to hear your take. Insurance is one of those things that uh, I feel like we all need more assistance with, and there's so much nuance on. So, um, please let us know how you've found the tool. Now, in terms of my thoughts, then I can see. Uh, a fabulous uh, sweet spot for a tool like this. Well, on multiple fronts, but one in particular, you know, if you've got uh, young advisors, maybe uh, new ones, professional year, but also um, new to insurance in particular, then to have a service like this where the service is their first port of call for insurance queries. So you could even have a practice that fo- focuses predominantly on insurance, right? But use a, t- a service like this, it's inexpensive per month as their first port of call, then it is wonderful learning they're going to get. So this is almost like providing them an insurance mentor on tap, right? Somebody they can go to and they'll gradually um, build up their expertise, utilize all the wonderful resources, and then can even bring it back to you for you together to debate it. Um, you know, most of our practices aren't big enough to have a, in you know, an insurance expert with as many years experience as David has. So to have that small piece of him through the membership um, or somebody like him is a powerful way to really amplify the level of expertise you can demonstrate um, in insurance. So to me, that's really what this is doing. Similar to, you know, having an internal chief investment officer when you get bigger and big enough, you know, then, you know, this is your chief insurance officer, but, you know, we're not big enough to do that. So we're, you know, utilizing a membership like this um, to get us that expertise. Um, And of course, the resources will be really beneficial. There'll be a whole lot of value there. But I think, you know, being able to say, look, you know, here's a client. This is what I'm thinking. What do you think? for a strategy, you know, is there anybody in particular I should avoid or look out for or or look at what features, like, a, you know, this is really valuable, Um, fantastic information and for it not to be, you can ask the insurers, but for it not to be just insurers is super powerful. So, you know, I think that's a a great niche that David is is filling there. Uh, Now, you know what time it is. We've come to that section of the episode, uh, the curious, curiosity corner part, and we're going to cover, you know, an app that helps you build that curiosity, but also I think could potentially solve a challenge that some of us may be having. Um, the curiosity corner app for this week is my social. Now you can find it at mysocial.ai uh, and their tagline is earn trust on LinkedIn intelligently. Now this is actually relatively new, actually very new to market, um, only a few months old and it's actually been um, built by a team based in Australia um, it, and the tool is focused on helping people increase their online professional profile. So this is really LinkedIn focused through increased reach and influence. And what it does is the tool uses AI and machine learning to help you really curate and create content that targets, you know, your niche and um, enhances your voice. So it's sort of a bit like having your own sort of brand agency, I guess, or, you know, the sort of thing that can help you um, deliver consistent content on LinkedIn. So, you know, it can curate content. Um, It can 
you had, and in fact has the ability to use AI to write the first draft draft of a post for you. Um, wow, you know, just getting you that extra lift of in terms of brainstorming, so that you're not looking at that white piece of paper and and starting from scratch. It can schedule the content in LinkedIn for you. It even has easy access to imagery you can pick from for a post. And their aim over time is to have it learn your tone of voice so that as you use the tool more, when it does come up with sample posts you could make on a particular topic or to share a particular article, then it's going to sound more and more like you in the sample text it comes up with. Uh, So like I said, it's only a few months out, but I would check it out, um, give it a try, let let me know what you think. Um, And, you know, I myself am going to be looking at it and just seeing if it can take out some of the manual and, and, uh, you know, brain struggling element of coming up with content for LinkedIn. So I'll be checking it out too. Well, that's all we've got for this week, folks. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice, tech fix, or to magically sent to you each Friday. And, you know, if you'd like a, uh, a speaker at your next event to brief your audience on becoming bionic advisors, or if you've even, even like uh, a facilitator in your business to inspire your team and get them innovating in a more natural way, then please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD, P E I T A M D. Otherwise, I look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.